From time to time, I'll get a message or a call from somebody who's complaining about inner groove distortion. And I always find these conversations mm, interesting. And I always follow up these claims with a question. What does inner groove distortion sound like to you? And almost inevitably, the answer I get back is, well, the uh, in, in the inner area of the record, things start getting a little bit of, uh, getting a little sibilant, and it sounds dirty or hashy, or um, uh, the music just is, it's, it's falling apart. It sounds like uh, there's grunge in the grooves, things like this. And this seems to be the most common way that people understand this concept of, of inner groove distortion, but this isn't inner groove distortion. <laughs> what they're describing is something very different, and I'll get to that in a moment. So what inner groove distortion really is, is a decrease in fidelity in which, in which the left channel and right channel contact edges of the stylus read the groove properly in time and phase with each other. And this risk of doing so increases as closer and closer you get to play towards the label. That is the inner groove area, where the density of information in the groove, it gets more and more condensed as you get closer to the label. So the risks increase for the stylus, which isn't getting any smaller as it courses towards the center of the record, of course, um, uh, starts to see uh, greater aberrations with respect to reading left channel, right channel in time properly. So, subjectively, we experience inner groove distortion just as a loss of focus, loss of clarity, um, decreased separation of instruments, um, less intelligibility. Uh, it's, it's not, it, it doesn't sound like distortion as we've come to know it, you know, a total uh, so let's say speaker cone breakup or mistracking or intentional distortion added say to you know electric uh, electric guitars um, this is a diff this is a very different thing when people tell me that they are listening to inner groove distortion what they're almost always referring to is a form of mistracking where and I've talked about this in my other videos including in uh, earlier soundbite videos where the stylus is momentarily losing contact with one or both of the groove walls. And this is a situation almost always created by the tone arm. Uh, the tone arm's horizontal forces are out of control, that is not enough or too much anti-skating, or the static frictional forces are too high. This is what the Wally Skater is all about. But in almost every case that somebody uh, complained to me that they were hearing this inner groove distortion where they were getting breakup and sibilance uh, as, as the stylus got closer and closer to the label, um, was able to be ameliorated completely by the proper use of a Wally skater. So hopefully this video helps you understand a little bit more about what inner groove distortion really is and is not, and uh, helps you understand a little bit better the value of using a Wally skater to make sure this doesn't happen to you. Until next week, on the next Sound Bites, enjoy Analog Forever.